there's a there's a lot of history and backstory about this this reason of how I ended up getting to 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 Greenville. That was a continuation of this sort of journey of a step of am I asking where Christ is in this and where is He calling me to faith? Because my arrival at Greenville was genuinely again a step into a not very well thought out uh, or or very well prepared sort of course of direction. Even the first night that I was in Greenville, I slept in my truck in a, in a Walmart parking lot and uh, went into the bathroom in the morning and sort of washed myself and got ready for Mass for Sunday morning. <laughs> it, that it was truly a real, st uh, a real step of knowing that I had to go from, from this community of Anglican and Episcopalianism, take that richness of the faith that was given to me, go to Neshota, transition there, find this new community, and it was a leap and a step of faith where uh, I didn't know how it was going to work out or what I was going to do, but God was faithful in it. And when I arrived at uh, Greenville in, in, in South Carolina, I didn't have a job. So I went to a Goodwill a location that does a job connection, and they were able to find me a maintenance job within the, the first week that I was there. So God, at, at, at all of these steps, I think you can kind of tell the pattern, at, at all of these steps when there wasn't a very clear sense of what I was doing. God was providing his grace to help guide and direct. And he was bringing a greater sense of awareness to my mind. The <laughs> Though my life was sort of almost stepping on the edge every time, he was bringing my mind more and more into that sort of sense of awareness of where he's been guiding me uh, in, a, in a lot of ways through, through hindsight. Uh, that extremely faithful time or point of, uh, of transition from Neshota to South Carolina again caused a bit of a crisis in me. Why, why am I in South Carolina? I'm, I'm now a part of the Catholic Church I, and, I'm, and I'm in love with it. It's, it's going, going beautifully. Um, but I felt as though there was a, a, a hole missing. Doing maintenance, being a part of the Catholic Church, doing all these sort of things. Knowing that I had this bit of theological training and, and liturgical training, but not really doing anything with it. That I, that I once again came to my priest, Father John Chalmers, a, a brother priest of mine in the ordinariate, uh, who said, well, we should send you down to seminary in Houston. I was the first seminarian, I wasn't the first one to petition, because there had been a, a, a gentleman, uh, uh, Deacon Nathan Davis, who was about to be uh, ordained to the priesthood in June, he was the first one to petition, but the ordinary was so new that they didn't have any resources to have uh, uh, a seminary. So by the time that I petitioned, they were more and more established, and they said, you will be our first uh, seminarian, and we'll send you to school. That was a very... Uh, important stage to then transition from South Carolina to Texas and go through uh, that, that really essential training and be immersed into a community of, of men, a group uh, uh, of 12 Catholic seminarians that had known each other for maybe five, six, seven years, and to be thrown into the mix of them, and they welcomed me with like open arms and made me a brother, uh, and I pursued uh, went through the seminary training and was ordained to the diaconate on um, May 31st, the Feast of the, um, of the Visitation, uh, 2016, and then I was ordained to the priesthood on um, the Feast Day of Saints Peter and Saint Paul, uh, June 29th on 2017. This ark, which is not, I haven't died, so it, it's still a, a living and active trajectory or it's still a living and active sort of development of faith. Uh, this seed of the faith that my family has given me, and they're still Episcopalian and I love them and I pray for their conversion and all this sort of stuff, uh, that they gave me the real roots of, of the faith that I had. College br brought me to a moment where I needed to ask critical questions. Uh, those critical questions and through the progress of the study at the seminary in, in, 
in Nishoda kept tugging at me this question, is there something essential and fundamentally true about Anglicanism, or is there something just slightly askew with it, something slightly different? And that always led me more and more to this desire to pursue in my mind, in my heart, in my spirituality, to find that fullness of truth. Uh, that has led me to the place where I found that um, in, in my mind and the way that God has been gracing uh, my particular temperament and my personality, he's given me the grace of the best of both worlds. The spirituality and the liturgical practice of something that I knew so well as an Anglican, as an Episcopalian, that has deep historical roots uh, in the Catholic Church, is now the expression that I can live into as, a, as an ordinary priest. But I also have the best of the both worlds of knowing that there is legitimate and uh, authority and structure and hierarchy in the Catholic Church. For me, it, it has been this, this progress of finding that God has been continually guiding me into, into the way that he has brought uh, a fullness of, of, of who I am and the, and the um, knowing that these are the best of both worlds, which in many ways sometimes feels like, was the ordinary created for Evan Simmons? <laughs> uh, but has really been a grace that God has given to his church for a moment of uh, a moment in church history of reconciliation between what has been the schism, that point of differentiation and separation that has led Anglicans and Episcopalians uh, off of the true vine of, of, the, uh, of the faith once delivered to Peter and to his apostles, that, that I find that there's a, um, a, a fullness now, a, a, um, a real receptor, uh, a real place of a home of knowing that, that this is the place where I, where the seed of my faith is growing, my mind is deeply activated, and the, and, and the liturgy deeply resonates with the spirit of my heart. Um, so thank you very much for this opportunity to talk to you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank yous and a few announcements uh, before we uh, close the prayer.